Hey everybody, it's the Herb Guy with the Elder Herb Shop, and welcome to Where Science Meets Nature, a channel where we discuss the medicinal value of plants and other natural substances in the world around us today. And um, I do have my chickens around us today. They are kind of free ranging because their coop isn't done yet. <laughs> Get out of there. Um, so anyway, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is like my fourth take, so I can only keep these guys away from me for so long. I'm sorry. Get out of here. What The plant you're looking at right now is called pineapple weed. And it's the first ingredient of what I'd like to talk about today. And what we're going to discuss is how to come up with your own natural herbal blend to take care of a condition. Now, this particular blend is going to be for me. Uh, I happen to have athlete's foot currently. And it just hasn't gone away with my normal stuff that I typically use. So, after digging into our notes and, and looking around a bit, I decided to come up with a recipe. And I'm going to show you guys how to come up with a recipe. And I'm going to go through the whole process. It's going to go from picking it to getting it all chopped up and put into the oil to making it into a lotion. Um, it's not the recipe that we use for our stuff. It's just one that I found online, but I'm going to share it with you so you can see somewhat how this process goes. Um, I've kind of already started, and I have some red clover flour that is not for you to eat. Um, the reason why I got red clover is because the, the flour itself has properties in it that have been shown in clinical studies to have some uh, really good antimicrobial activity. And I'm also going to get out of here. I'm not sharing. There's plenty of other. Grab some flowers from pineapple weed. And the reason why I'm using pineapple weed is because on a chemical level, it's it's identical to chamomile. Now, if you take up a pineapple weed flower, typically you, f you find it in rocky areas and stuff. Um, you take the flower and you crush it up and it smells just like pineapples. And if you make it into a tea, it, it tastes like an unsweetened pineapple tea, which isn't nearly as appetizing as you might think. Come on. So I'm grabbing up some flowers. What I'm going to end up ultimately doing is I'll weigh everything so I get a ratio. If this works for what I need it for. Um, I know a few other people that have some athlete's foot. I'll give them a try. They can use it too. And if it works with enough people, then we can list it for sale. If you've ever wondered how these companies come up with large, uh, or with new products, you know, they have two ways to do it, on animals or on people. So, we use people. Usually it's family members or, or really close friends who are really brave enough to try some of our blends. And, and it's oftentimes made sp for a specific purpose. Um... You know, uh, any any type of condition, somebody says, hey, I, I have this problem, what can you do for me? Most of the blends that we have for sale in our store have come from customers' requests, and they usually turn out to be really good sellers. So, okay, so, if you can see there, I have some pineapple seed flowers with my red clover flowers. Most likely... The weights on these will be by the gram. When they're wet, when they're dry, you can roughly half that. I'll give you about the same weight. So those are the two flowers that I want to start with. Um, this is all stuff you can, well, I'm going to find in our in our backyard for the most part, except for one of the ingredients. Um, see, there's plenty of plantain in the driveway, but I've seen some better ones in the yard. And we'll get on to that one later. We can go over this way, because there's another plant that I really wanted to get. This here is mullein. This plant itself will get, I don't know, six, seven feet tall. Those leaves are really broad and hairy. Not to be confused. Anyway, you can feel that. Um, when this stuff is dried, it's it's really a pain to process, because it this, this, these fine hairs... If you're even marginally warm or you have some residual sweat on your arms, it'll stick and it'll cause, um, well, at least for me, itching. It doesn't bother my wife, but we need one of these leaves. Mullen is a really good anti-inflammatory. Um, 
clinical trials, it's also shown to be really good at keeping inflammation down and killing microbes and fungi. So I think I'm going to add this. And since it's such a nice plant, just grab one from the bottom. And trust me when I tell you, more will grow. And there's our next ingredient. Again, you know, this is only for one person, me. So I'm going to make a very small batch so I'm not wasting a product in case it doesn't work. Okay, what else do we have? Let's see. How about some dandelion? Anybody ever tell you that dandelion is like one of the coolest plants in your yard? It has so many medicinal value uh, properties. It has so many, in fact, that uh, that's going to be my next video, pretty sure. As soon as I can find a spot that has a lot of dandelions. Um, for this particular instance, I just want the flowers. And the reason why I want the flowers is because that's the part of the plant that has the most iodine. Typically speaking, uh, yellow plants have iodine, calendula, dandelion, sunflowers, all of them contain high amounts of dandelion, or iodine. Um, there's another flower. Kind of weird, we don't have a lot of those in our yard. If you're going to pick a lot of dandelion flowers, I would recommend very, very much and vehemently that you uh, put them in the freezer. Don't try to store them because then you'll end up with a bunch of white fluff balls. They'll go to seed and then you'll just have a bunch of dandelion seed instead of dandelion flower. Here's a plant that looks very, very similar to dandelion. And if you're not paying attention, you can be confused with it. If you can see right there. That is not a dandelion. Let me see if I can get the sun out of it so you can see. There you go. That flower is called a cat's ear. And it has a lot of the same similar properties to dandelion. But it is definitely not. And they do, oh yeah, grow in the yard right around. They like to, to be under trees. They don't like full sun like dandelions do. But, oh boy. You'd think with all this grass as tall as it is, we'd have a ton of dandelions everywhere. Good thing I have some in the freezer. <laughs> um, well, I guess while I'm here, there's plenty of it. Why don't we grab some plantain? You see that big leaf? <sighs> nice and green. Not any bugs on it. Plantain is a good anti-inflammatory. It's good for pain. Oftentimes people with athlete's foot, um, they'll scratch so much that they have sores and pain. Plantain is a really good healer. I'm just grabbing some handfuls for a little blend. Almost looks like a salad. <laughs> In theory, I guess you could eat it like a salad. But it wouldn't necessarily do the same thing for you. Or at least what I'm looking to do. Gotta keep our tools with us. I hate to have to go back for them. All that double walking. There's a nice plantain. As you can tell, I'm picking more of that than anything else. And it'll be the one of the primary ingredients. You do it one of two ways. I mean, if you have it dry, you buy it from your supplier or whatever. You can still use that. All of these ingredients will be listed in the description below with the medical studies to go with them for you science deniers. Now one of the key ones, and oftentimes people will use it for poison ivy and other itches, uh, and one of the ones that I want to get, I love picking it fresh. It's almost like an aloe, and for those of you who've been following me on my other social media accounts for a while, you'll know that I really like this plant. It grows in abundance as long as you have soft, uh, moist enough soil, typically all over the United States. There's some really good fat ones. We'll take those. It's called jewelweed. Here's what jewelweed looks like. You kind of see it. Wind's blowing. makes it hard to focus, I know. But this particular stem 
It's wild. It's nice and thick. I mean, it's as thick as one of my fingers. And the good thing about jewel weed uh, is it breaks right off. And the roots are kind of funky. They look almost prehistoric. Clear that stuff off there. You can see the offshoots here. They look kind of prehistoric. Kind of cool. But we don't want to look at it for history. If you can, you might be able to see how wet that is. And it grows right here with the poison ivy. I mean, if I'm sure if I look close enough, I'll find enough of it sitting right around here with the poison ivy. Or poison ivy with the jewel weed. But this, this juice from the jewel weed, very wet. Uh, you can use that to, to neutralize. Say you're out working in the whatever the yard out in the woods and uh, you get into some poison ivy and you know you have you can take the jewel weed and just let's see if I can get it in camera just wipe it on you can cut it up and paint it like a paintbrush I mean however you want to do it but it's refreshing if you get bit by a, by a bug it works really well for that um, fresh jewel weed is the best because this juice is really really helpful it's the main ingredient for uh, our poison ivy cream and our anti-itch cream which is the same product but there's a nice one we're gonna use this and we're gonna use the whole plant leaf and all all of it just break it in half all right oh I guess you probably want to see that huh how full our little bowl is looks crazy full doesn't it all those plants in there but once we get to the next part of the process, um, you'll see I'll quote-unquote weed it out <laughs> a little bit and, and I'll keep what I want and, and I may end up going back and getting more mullein. Um, I may go get some lamb's ear, which is very similar to mullein. But this is what we have right now. This is where I'm going to stop this particular video. And next part of it will be we'll be cutting it up and getting it in the oil and, and I'll show you what we do next. Stay tuned. And we're back. All right, so for you guys, it's only been a few seconds. For me, it's been a couple days. We had some other things we had to take care of. And this is another point that I want to bring up. You can freeze your, you can freeze your herbs, as you can hear, um, to use at a later time. And, you know, oftentimes if you're going to freeze them for long periods of time, either put them in a Ziploc or use a, uh, oh, vacuum sealer if you have one uh, if you vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer they're less likely to get freezer burnt and when you cut it up you just you really just make it as fine as you can I mean there's no real method for the madness get a pan to put it in you either want to use stainless steel or Uh, say porcelain, ceramic, you really want to avoid things like copper, cast iron, Teflon, if you can. Um, the reason why is those, those particular uh, products will leave elements in your, in your sab or whatever, and it'll affect the end quality of it. This doesn't have to be perfect. In reality, if you really wanted to, you could put it all in your uh you can put it all in your um blender with the oil and just blend it and the more surface area that that it has to work with the more of the properties that get released um and because i was doing this for a specific reason i.e the athlete's foot uh, i picked specific herbs for that you can do this with teas you could do this with salves, of course. You could do it with lotions. Um, one of the things that most people don't tell you, look at that jewel weed. <laughs> it's almost like little ice cubes. Um, is that salves and lotions pretty much have the same base oil. Um, most lotions have oil in them. Ours has oil, but we use uh, emu oil with all of our products, which is... Uh, bird very similar to an ostrich and the reason why we use the emu oil is because it acts like a, a very natural DMSO and it soaks in to uh, through all the pores of your skin it gets in where, where the issues are they use it in places like uh, New Zealand and, and Australia 
in their burn units because they've shown that emu oil is very, very effective in, in helping to heal burns. Uh, any of our products that have oil base, which is pretty much any of our body care products at this point, they all contain emu oil. I'm a big, big believer. Not to mention the emu steaks are actually pretty tasty too. For you vegans out there, I'm sorry. Don't knock it till you've tried it though. <laughs> Could be tasty. Just keep chopping them up. Get everything all diced and ground. Um, part of the thing about companies that, that irritate me, and, and uh, you know, look, I get it. I'm in business to make money too, right? But we also like to educate people. You know, it's, it's nice to know that there's an alternative to pharmaceuticals. Um, for a lot of years, I was, had my share of pharmaceuticals. I grew up allergic to everything and had to give, give myself allergy shots when I was young. And so I understand, you know, I've had antibiotics and, and everything else. Try to avoid those at all costs for myself, for sure. Sorry. I'm not used to cutting up herbs like this. I normally just grind them up, but don't need the grass. It's not very helpful. Now, the good thing about this is um, this product works, you know, and I'll get pictures and I'll post it on like our Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so those of you that are following strictly on YouTube, um, I'll try to include a picture in later videos. But just the plantain. My fingers are cold now. So for this particular mix, um, and I'll, I'll make sure to put the recipe in the description below, but in this particular mix, I'm using, for my oil base, I'm using a third of a cup of sunflower oil, um, three quarters of a cup of our base oil. I found a recipe online on how to make a lotion. Um, once we get to that part where we're doing the lotion, I'm not gonna, well, and I'm probably gonna get rid of the grass, but I'm not gonna, um, get rid of the pineapple, or I'm not gonna chop up the pineapple weed. And you got the whole plant there. Might wash off the root. I'll just break it off. Never the only one for the flower. But yeah. I have some frozen dandelions that I'm going to throw in there too. How you want to do this is ultimately I'm going to have a cup and a half of oil. So most likely I'll do like three quarter cup of, uh, of the sunflower oil with three quarter, three quarter cups of our base oil for, for the lotions and whatnot. And... See if the dandelions are in here. This is what it all looks like when it's in the pan. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's done in the blender, of course, you know, you're going to have a lot more surface area. And I am going to go get some more dandelion. Um, another herb that I'm adding to this is golden seal. Golden seal is a really, really powerful antifungal, antimicrobial. Um, you can find it in the wild, but, you know, they do have some... You might want to check your local laws to make sure that it's okay to go harvest it wild and that you don't need a permit. Um, apparently, you can grow it yourself. There are places online where you can buy the roots, and, and you know it's a finicky plant, though it can be tricky, tricky to uh, tricky to grow. And and the common misconception is that you know you you don't want to, or that everybody's going to take golden seal root, which is completely not the way that's supposed to work. Um, according to the new science that's coming out. It's, it's the green leaves that have just as much of the properties, only there's some other properties in there that make the, uh, the alkaline content of the roots, which make them so bad. It, it, it neutralizes the alkaline content, so, you know, it makes it so it, it's actually much better for you. But anyway, um, I'm going to take our oil, I'm going to put in here, and cook it for just a couple of hours and, and give me a minute here um i'll go grab that real quick i'll pour it in give you an idea of what that's looking like okay so i quickly went and got a cup and a half of oil 
This is the three quarter cup sunflower, three quarter cup of our base oils. Um, you pour it directly into your chopped up herbs. And I'll tell you why you're getting a little bit more than what's on the recipe um, here in a bit. Stir it up. Now, when you go to cook this, you really have to, to watch it very closely. A, these are green herbs. They're going to pop. They're going to bubble. Um, if you get it too hot, you ultimately end up with a bunch of fried herbs. Um, and a lot of the, the beneficial properties will, will get cooked out. So, when you go to do this, if you have a thermometer, try to keep your temperature at only about 150 degrees. You can see that the oil is actually starting to turn a little green. It's a good sign. Um, but you cook it for about two, maybe three hours um, on really, really low heat. Once it's done, and, and we'll get to that point, I'm going to get ready to cook it. Um, once it's done... I'll go ahead and show you the next part of the process and how we're going to mix it. We'll, we'll take it straight from straining it to the lotion part of it. Um, I did, like I said, I found a recipe online that, that I'm willing to share. And um, it'll be in the comment section below. But yeah, there we are. <laughs> that soupy mess. It does not look very appetizing, does it? It rarely does. All right. So I'm going to get this cooking and I'll see you guys in a couple more seconds. All right, so we're back again. A couple seconds for you, a couple hours for me. I went ahead and cooked this up, and we have a nice mix, though most people wouldn't find it very appetizing. I'm sure that's what it turned into. You see how the, well, there's a lot of green. It certainly smells like your yard. <laughs> um, and remember, I told you to use a little bit more, well, I used a little bit more of the, uh, sunflower oil than the recipe called for and here's the reason because now you have to strain it now you can do this really simple I took an old t-shirt with a rubber band around just an old plastic throwaway container right something you get that has potato salad or whatever in it set this down and then you pour your stuff in um, if you want to go faster with it the best way to do it is to do it when it's hot because the oil has lost a lot of its or has a lot of viscosity it's very very wet and it'll typically slide through just about any type of screen you have get a spatula get everything out okay so it doesn't smell that bad see it going there get as much out as you can you don't want to waste it once I have that Hold the outside of the cup and pull the rubber band off. Be careful because it will fall down inside if you're not paying attention. And then you got to start this process all over again, which is no fun at all. All right. So I just wring it as tight as you can. And the reason why I'm using gloves is because I'm doing a video. If I wasn't doing a video, um, I wouldn't bother because there's nothing wrong with all this oil, I'll tell you that. Squeeze it all out. You get a nice green base oil there. Okay, so the recipe. Hold on. Get more. All right. Squeeze as hard as you can. I mean, it really isn't that big of a deal. And when you're all done, you end up with a very gross looking. It's like something maybe a owl vomited up or something. It's a pleasant thought, huh? Sorry. Oh, crap. All right. So, you get those out of the way. Take off the gloves. Now, the way the measurement, what the measurement called for was a cup of aloe juice, which I already put into our mixer. Um, a third of a cup of oil for the first part of it. There's a third of a cup. That's the part we're going to heat up. I just have it in a small ceramic pan. One of those cheap cheap ones you get from Walmart. This is 
the stuff that we use for making our own or our initial products because we really want to make sure that it works well and doesn't do any good to spend hundreds of dollars making big batches if the stuff doesn't work. All right. Then you get your three quarter cup of oil. And you do have a little bit left over. That oil is actually usable. You can just rub it right on your skin. You can use it as a um, additional moisturizer. Uh, anything like that. Or you can just add a few more grams of uh, beeswax to the mix. Which I probably will do. Um, throw a few extra grams of beeswax so that way I don't waste the oil. I don't know that I have any use for it other than this. This is also the time you want to add any essential oils. If you happen to have any you want to add to your lotion. Do not cook them on the stove when you're doing your cooking. Um, you'll cook all the all the benefits out, which is not helpful. You want to heat your third of a cup separately from the three quarters of a cup. And by heating it, you put it on the stove and you put your beeswax in it. And, and then you just start mixing. We use beeswax. Uh, some people use shea butter as a mix plenty of other options out there for those of you who are allergic to bee pollen or beeswax um, for this particular mix I did a little bit of research lavender oil lavender essential oil is really good as an antifungal and antibacterial antimicrobial so I'm gonna put that Thirty. Thirty drops. And I'm gonna use an equal amount of tea tree oil, which is also very good for fungus. They use it in Australia. Oh man. Okay, so there's thirty one. Guess that means it'll be extra potent, right? Mix it up with the oil. Do not cook this part. This is your three quarters of a cup. Okay, you can use any, you can use a blender, you can use a food processor, you can use a drink mixer, you know, like they use for milkshakes. Um, we just happen to have a Ninja here. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit so you can see it. In here now is the aloe juice. I'm adding my essential oil, infused oil to the aloe. See how the oil sits on top? You can hear our product over here cooking. Alright, so you only want to heat it up enough to get the, the beeswax melted fairly good. Um, you get it too hot, it doesn't emulsify very well right away, and you're going to be sitting there mixing for a while. This is about to get very noisy, so in the next few seconds, if you hear it going, you can turn down your volume, but pay close attention to when we mix, and you'll actually be able to see the point where the mixture does its mixing part, and the, emulsif the emulsification of it starts. Kind of cool. All right, so we got that part. The beeswax is melted. Move that out of the way real quick so you can see. The beeswax is melted. What's bubbling in there was, was the water. All right, so can you see that all right? I hope so. All right. You got to be relatively quick because beeswax will harden and then you'll just have a big old lump of beeswax inside. The aloe I keep cold because it does cool off the beeswax and then you don't have to wait so long while it mixes. So, um... Give me one moment, I'll be right back. I did forget that I was gonna throw some extra beeswax in there because I have the extra oil to use. So I'm just adding a few extra grams of beeswax to my mix. And I'll just go ahead and pour the rest of the oil and stuff in here. Whatever, get a little bit of extra lotion, right? Mix it up. You shouldn't even have to heat it up because it's already hot enough to melt the, the beeswax. 
takes, uh, I think it's 145 degrees to melt beeswax. Anything hotter than that, you run the risk of scorching it. And scorched beeswax smells terrible. You certainly don't want to rub it all over your body. Another ingredient that I'm adding to mine. It's just for this lotion. Because I am putting some emu oil in there. So it can soak in. This particular product is for me. If it works, I will fine tune it. And it will be a little bit more uh, detailed. Alright, beeswax is mixed. Here we go. You pour that in. Get as much of it out of there as possible. And then start mixing immediately. Noise is starting. Keep an eye on it. And you can see right about the time it starts to mix. Use my head if it wasn't attached. So then we take this part and go like this. You want to get all the stuff out from the bottom. The other thing about using emu oil in your lotions, um, oftentimes when you get lotions, you know that greasy feeling that you get afterwards? You don't get that with emu oil because it literally starts absorbing on contact and within two or three minutes of making your lotion with emu oil in it um, you won't even feel the residue of a lotion it's an interesting uh, aroma blend lavender and tea tree all right here we go gonna get noisy again There's our lotion. Ooh, I almost spilled it out. That'd have been terrible. And that's how easy it is to do that. So hopefully you liked this video. I know it was rather lengthy. Um, hopefully I was able to show you some things that you hadn't seen before. And hopefully uh, you can use something like this. This works with all kinds of things, teas, salves lotions compresses i mean you know the sky's the limit eh, really about the only thing that limits you is your imagination um make sure you do your research you know you can't just jump right in and think that everything's going to be great if you haven't done your research first you know no lavender oil by itself does not cure diabetes you know that that kind of stuff is just asinine anyway that's how you got that that's how you go about making your own remedies that, you know, it didn't really take all that long if I had to time everything out. You could have all of this done in three or four hours. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's your lotion. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Um, if you like the video, leave it a like. And uh, feel free to subscribe so you can continue watching. Everybody, take care.